Hi, welcome to the Bridge Podcasts. We hope you enjoy the following message. For more information on all that's happening at the Bridge Church, please visit www.bridge-church.com. Father, I thank you this morning for your awesome presence here this morning. I thank you that this morning my speech and my preaching will not be with just persuasive words of human wisdom, but it will be in the demonstration of the spirit of power that your faith should be known to all people in this place this morning. I thank you that revelation knowledge will be flowing freely in this room this morning. Lord, I thank you that the hearts of your people are ready to receive what you have for them. Lord, let them not look at me as just another person, but let them see that I, have, I am a messenger from the Almighty God, carrying your word. Lord, I thank you that their lives will never be the same again. I come against any distracting spirits in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And Lord, I thank you that your word will have full course this morning in this room. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I bring you greetings from Pastor Benny and Pastor Nan who are in South Africa. And I know Pastor Gary will be doing the tithes and offerings later on. And he will um, share a bit more about what Pastor Benny and Pastor Nan are doing in South Africa. But I just want you to, to, to know that Pastor Benny and Nan are doing very well. And one of the things that they, they, they told me yesterday was from Acts 20, 24. And the Bible says that, By my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of what? Telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 24. So this is what our pastors are doing. They're going all around the world telling people about the good news of the gospel. That is the heart of God. In Galatians 3.8, the Bible says that God preached the gospel to Abraham. What gospel did he preach to Abraham? He said, you will be a blessing to people. I will bless you so that you will be a blessing to people. And that's what the gospel is all about. Blessed so that you can be a blessing. Galatians 3 verse 8. So God himself preached the gospel. And this is why we have been born into this world, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, of the blessing and the power that he has in store for all of us who will believe. And I believe that this is what our pastors are doing when they they travel. I, I consider it an honor to be standing in the pulpit to share um, the Word of God this morning. I have entitled my message this morning, The Stronghold of Faith. The Stronghold of Faith. Why did I choose this message? Or why did God place this message on my heart? We've been sharing over the last few months about contending for the supernatural. Now, if we're contending for for the supernatural, there must be something that we have to access to be able to walk in the supernatural. Now, truth is a universal commodity. Truth will always deliver the same value in Ghana, in Nigeria, In Scotland, in England, in America, truth will deliver the same results. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2.14 that, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Thanks be to God who does what? Who always causes us what? To triumph. So truth 
will always cause you to what? To triumph in Christ Jesus. God is no respecter of nations. God is no respecter of persons. God is no respecter of tribes. God is no respecter of any social group. Because the Bible says in Romans 10, 12, that there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek. It also goes on to say that in, in Revelations 5, 9, that God has what? Has redeemed us by the blood from every tribe from every tongue, and from every people. So God is not a racist. He doesn't perform miracles in Africa and leaves Scotland behind. The truth will deliver the same value anywhere, at any time. The truth has obtained for us power, the truth has obtained for us riches. The truth has obtained for us strength, wisdom, honor, glory, and blessings. Revelations 5.12 The truth has obtained for us what? Power. The truth has obtained for us riches. The truth has obtained for us wisdom. Strength, honor, glory, and blessings. So there's nothing under this sun that redemption hasn't obtained for us. The only thing that's able to deliver this to us is faith. As free as salvation is, salvation is deliverable only through faith. The same way, truth, and the same way, power, Riches, strength, wisdom, honor, and blessings are only deliverable by faith. So you and I need to understand and grasp what faith is so that we can move into the supernatural or contending, you know, we've been contending for the supernatural. If we really, 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 really want to see the supernatural, then we really have to grasp what faith is. Now, the Bible says that what? Without faith, it is what? Impossible to please God. So without faith, nothing will be delivered to you. You can be a Christian. You can be saved. But the sevenfold blessings of God, which are available in Revelations 5.12, will never be delivered to you if you don't grasp what faith really is. I'm actually very concerned because I think a lot of Christians get frustrated because they don't see the power of God or they don't see the blessings of God in their lives. And that's the reason why I believe that God has put this message on my heart. It's actually been burning in my heart since July this year. I've been, I've been on the same thing since July this year. And I've been asking God, why don't we see the things here in Scotland like a scene in Africa? The dead being raised, sick people being healed, financial blessings. One of the churches in Africa, Bishop Edepo's church, seats 50,000 people on a Sunday. Why don't we see that today? Why are the churches empty? Why do we pray for people and nothing happens? Why? You remember what Jesus said when he saw the fig tree? No one, well, he said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And then he walked away. Nine words. And then they went. He went and swept the temple. He came back the next day. They were passing by, and the, and the disciples were surprised. That fig tree that you cursed has withered. Nine words. 
and it was happening. Can you imagine one of us standing next to that tree, being asked to speak to that tree? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray against this tree. You move from there. You're going to wither. You're going to die. And Jesus, this tree is going to die. And this is going to happen. And oh, tree, I speak to you. Nine words. Let no one eat of this tree ever again. And then he walked away. That is a spiritual man. That's a man of faith. Why is it not working for us? Why is the supernatural not a natural thing here all the time? God hasn't changed. I am the Lord. I change not. There's no Greek and there's no Jew, so there's no racism here. God doesn't favor the guys in Africa over the guys here. There's been many heroes of faith from this country. So straight away you realize that God is not partial. He gives freely to everyone. Power, riches, strength, wisdom, and honor, glory, and blessings. A sevenfold inheritance that the redemption on the cross gives to us. So we need to examine what faith really is. If we don't understand or if we don't grasp the meaning of faith, if we don't appreciate what faith really is, we will walk through this life defeated, poor, without wisdom, without glory, without any of the blessings. And that's the reason why I'm here this morning to explain with the help of God what we need to do as a church to get us to where we need to get to. So I hope you're ready to get into your spirit what God has for us this morning. So straight away we can identify that faith is the most potent force in the whole universe. Faith is the most potent force force in the whole universe. Why? If thou or if you can believe how many things? All things are possible to those who can believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to those who can believe. Now, the Bible goes on to say that With God, what? All things are possible. So when you connect to God through faith and you believe that all things are possible, then suddenly you've moved into the class of God. So what can we say? Faith, what? Confers divinity on humanity. No wonder a lot of people are going around trying to read Ouija boards, Because everybody is interested in the supernatural. I believe it's coded into our genes. We really want to see the supernatural. It's right there inside you. People will queue. I hear people queue in heaven to go get their palms red. But it's inside you. If you can believe, all things are possible to those who can believe. Not some things. All things are possible to them that can believe. So the big question is, if faith is so potent, how come we're so impotent, 
so powerless, so weak, and so defeated. Why? And through the rest of the message, I believe we'll get the answers. It's quite a long message, and I spoke to Pastor Benny about it, and I'll try and get through as much as I can this morning. But if I don't get through it, we'll, <clears throat> we'll finish the rest um, another time. So I've said in one of the previous statements that faith is what? The most what? Potent force in the whole of the universe. Because if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Now in my other vocation, which is in medicine, we always call something pitfalls. You always look for the pitfalls so that you avoid them. Now, let, let's look at a few pitfalls when it comes to faith. A lot of people think that faith is just a biblical principle. But no, faith is not a biblical principle. Faith is our access to God himself. And when you access God, what happens? Power flows to you. you. Remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says what? She pressed forth and touched the hem of his garment. Jesus what? said what? Power of virtue has flowed from me. And into this woman. So faith is not just a biblical principle. Faith is what? The empowerment or faith is a platform to get empowerment, to get triumph in life. It is not just a principle that we try to use on a daily basis. It's our access to the power of God. Faith is not a religious theory. It is not something that you think up. It is not something that's in the head that you do experiments with. It is what? A mystery of the kingdom. 1 Timothy 3, 9. The Bible says what? Holding the mystery of what? Faith with a pure conscience. So faith is not a religious theory. It is a mystery of the kingdom. Now what is mystery? Mystery is a kingdom secret that gives you mastery in life. I'll say that again. Mystery is a kingdom secret that gives you mastery in this life. Nobody goes around sharing their secrets to everyone. You only share your secret with someone that you're really, really friendly with. Someone who is very close to you. So faith is a mystery. So it's not something that a normal person will grasp. I believe that most of us sitting here believe that when we die, we're going to heaven. I don't see any halos on your head or anything like that. But it's a mystery. You know that you know that you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're saved. You have been redeemed from hell. And you've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. It's a mystery. Again, faith is not a religious logic. Whereas one plus one gives you two, 
or two times three gives you six. It is not a religious logic. But what is, what is it? It is what? A spiritual weapon. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. It is not a religious logic. It is a spiritual weapon. Ephesians 6, 16. The Bible says that what? Above all, taking what? The shield of faith. When you take the shield of faith, what happens? You are able to what? Withstand what? The fiery darts that the devil will throw at you. Let me just mention something here just in passing. The Holy Spirit just brought this to me. The Bible has prophesied, it is all written, that in the end times, there's going to be what? Famine. There's going to be what? Pestilence. There's going to be trouble. So you've got to find a way of avoiding it because you cannot change prophecy. You've got to find a way to exempt yourself. You have to get an exemption note. How do you do that? Through faith in God and his word. Believing what he says about you. Believing the promises of God. Because if you can believe, all things will be possible to you. So when the economy is going down, you will be up in a down economy. When sickness is thrown at you, you will be healed in Jesus' name. A thousand will fall on your right hand side, ten thousand on your left hand side, but nothing will come near you. That is the mystery of faith. You cannot change what's happening in the world. The economy goes up and down. Probably every ten years it goes into a recession. But you've got to get an exemption from all the troubles and your it is only deliverable through faith. So he said, say faith is not a, a, a religious logic. It is a spiritual weapon. Again, faith, um, um, faith is not a biblical philosophy. It is an ever-winning spiritual force. Faith is an ever-winning spiritual force. I must say this. Faith is not a denomination. I'm of the charismatic faith. What is that? I'm of the Catholic faith. I'm of the Presbyterian faith. Faith is a platform for empowerment. Faith is a platform. When you go up there, you get empowered so that you get triumph in this life. So it is important that every Christian grasps what faith is so that you and I can move into the supernatural things of God. A Christian is a supernatural person. So we should be walking in the supernatural normally. It shouldn't be something that happens every six months or every five weeks. You should be walking in that all the time. I like the way Pastor Benny puts it. It should be deja vu. You just walk into it all the time. So it is not a biblical philosophy, but it is an ever-winning spiritual force. First John 5, 4. It says, this is the victory that overcomes the will. This is the victory. So faith is victory. And you will overcome every single thing that the devil will throw against you. Because you've got the shield of faith there. And the devil is trying to throw things at you and just, you're just coming like that. Pushing that away, pushing that away, pushing that away, pushing that away. But without faith, you cannot access the sevenfold wonderful, marvelous gifts that redemption gives us. 
So we need to examine what faith is, how faith comes, and why our faith is not working. You've heard this before in Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You've heard that before, haven't you? Well, it's much more than that. Faith comes by hearing, but more importantly, by hearing from God. Hearing from God is the stronghold of faith. Hearing from God is the stronghold of faith. I hear a lot of stories in different churches and even in this church. And you listen to people and you're like, I don't believe they've heard from God. They're doing that because it's just a religious exercise. If you've heard from God about tithing on offering, it will never be a problem for you. If you've heard from God concerning serving in the church, it will never be a problem for you. If you've heard from God about where you should work and what job you should, make, you should take, if you've heard from God about being in church on Sunday, because I remember when I heard from God, He said, Look, do not, forsake for, uh, the, the, um, do not forsake the assembling of the brethren together. So anytime I'm trying to get a job, I'm trying to weave around that so that I can be in church on Sunday. And my brother Dermot will tell you, in my specialty in emergency medicine, it's 24-7. We're there all the time. So it's a mystery that I'm even standing here on a Sunday. It's just by the grace of God. But I made that decision based on the word of God. Because I heard from God. So faith comes principally by hearing from heaven. And I tell you, if you hear from heaven, the earth will hear you. The earth will listen to you. That's why Jesus is able to stand and say to that fig tree, nine words, and walks away, and it happens for him. If you look at Hebrews 11, at all the heroes of faith, majority, probably over 90% of them, Heard from God. So the stronghold of all these heroes' faith was what? Access to the voice of God. Let's look at Moses. If you read through the story of Moses, these days we have Bibles that you can just do a quick search. God said to me, God said to me, God said to me, God said to me, God said go, God said come, God said jump, God said, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. One word from God will bring out the star inside you. Most of us have been hearing the word, but we haven't been hearing from God. So it becomes a religious exercise. Hearing directly from God, like I said, is the stronghold of faith. No one hears from God and doubts Him. The Bible says in what? Revelations 1.15, and again it's in 14, um, Revelations 14 verse 2, Revelations 19 verse 6, and Ezekiel 43 verse 2, that the voice of the Lord is what? It's as the sound of many waters. 
The voice of God is as the sound of many waters. You can't hear God and doubt Him. You can't hear God and do something else. You can't hear God and go off and try and do something else. Because the voice of God is irresistible. I remember in 2006, October, I heard it clearly. I was in Ghana. I was actually getting married. And the Lord told me, don't sign any more contracts. I want you to support your pastor in whatever he wants you to do. It was a big one. But I couldn't get that voice out of me. It was totally irresistible. So I worked with pastor. I used to buy, get his tickets. And actually, you know the funny thing? And I probably hasn't, haven't told pastor before. Probably said it just my wife. When I resigned from my work and I, I told pastor, I remember we were, we were driving and we were, we, he was dropping me off in, 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 um, in our house, in, in my house. And I told him, well, this is what I believe the Lord has told me and I just want to support you in whatever way um, I can. And this is what Pastor Benny told me. Well, at this point in time, I don't really have anything for you to do. Now, how would you feel if you get told that after you've resigned from your work? Oh, God, you're wicked. You shouldn't have let me do this. But, you know, you just go off in tangents. But because of the voice of God, which was irresistible, it didn't bother me. I said, well, Lord, that's what you've told me to do. I hung about until something shows up. So I, was, I served in the office. I was there a few times. You know, I did, I did practically everything that pastor wanted me to do at that point. But the voice of God is irresistible. And I, th I tell you what, let's look at the heroes of faith. We've talked about Abraham being what? The father of faith. What did Abraham hear at the age of 75? Leave your house, leave your brethren, leave your country, go into a land that I will show you, and I will make you what? A blessing, so that you will be a blessing to others. At the age of 75, Abraham just got up and did it. 75, the voice of God is irresistible. Again, God came to him and said, this is my covenant with you. You will circumcise every male in your family and in your household, including the slaves. And then Abraham picks up a stone and cuts off. the foreskin of every male in his household. I'm sure some people are cringing in their seats right now. But the voice of God will make you think the unthinkable. The voice of God will make you dare the undareable. The voice of God will make you do the undoable. The voice of God will make you what? Move the immovable. When you have access to the voice of God, nothing stops you. Let's bring it back home. Pastor Bernie heard God speak to him in every more. He said, you've got to pack your things and come back to Scotland. A lot of the times, when you hear the voice of God like that, you don't want to do it. Just like tithing and offering. When you hear it, you don't really want to do it. Because you've got to pay the light bill, you've got to pay the gas bill, you've got to pay the car bill, you've got to pay all those bills. You don't really want to do it. But if you're having access to the voice of God, that voice is what? Irresistible. Another example of what God said to Abraham. He's a father of faith. God said to him, 
Take your son, your only son, whom you love so much, and go up into the mountain and offer him as a sacrifice. So for many of us, it will be like, well, take the job that you love so much and your children and whatever and give it all up for, and, you know, just go and sacrifice it. And the Bible says what? Abraham rose up what? Early in the morning. So we've got to understand that the faith of Abraham was rooted in the voice that he heard. The faith of Abraham, the father of faith, was rooted in the voice that he heard. If you don't have access to that voice, you'll just be moving around and trying things. And your life will be a defeated one on a daily basis. Remember what Jesus said? I only what say and do what my father what does. That's where we all want to get to. Access to the voice of God will bring you freedom. Access to the voice of God will bring you life. Access to the voice of God will bring you from the bottomless pit onto the mountain top. Access to the voice of God will make a nobody become a somebody. So hearing from God should always be the stronghold of our faith. Let's look at the story of Moses. Moses initially tried to deliver the Jews who were suffering. And he slayed someone and he got into trouble, so he had to flee. But at the right time, before the burning bush, he heard the voice of God. And what did God say? He said, I have seen the affliction and the suffering of my people, and I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Jews. So you go down to Egypt. Now I'm ready. You go down to Egypt and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. If you actually read through the, the whole account, God actually told him at some point, get up, go. Pharaoh will be at the riverside. Go tell him that I said, let my people go, otherwise this is going to happen. Can you imagine waking up one morning and then getting a flight and going down to Downing Street just to go and tell the prime minister that let my people go? No protocols. No writing any letters to get any permission. Just show up. He said, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go. No protocols. The voice of God is irresistible. The voice of God is unstoppable. The voice of God will cure the doubts of life. If you are in doubt about anything, access to the voice of God will cure that doubt in your life. Let's look at Isaac. In fact, before we go to Isaac, in Exodus, and this, I don't want to give all the scriptures. It's all in Exodus. You can, you know, you can go and spend some time. I, I'm, 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 Thoroughly enjoyed reading that, and I'll go back to it again and again. But let's look at um, Moses again. In Exodus chapter, um, chapter 7, verse 1, the Bible says that what? God told Moses that what? I have made you a God before Moses, and Aaron shall be your prophet. So he shows up before Pharaoh, fearless. Because God had told him that what? I have made you a God before Pharaoh. 
So the voice of God was the stronghold of Moses' faith. The voice of God was a stronghold of Abraham's faith. The voice of God is the stronghold of Pastor Benny's faith because otherwise he would have given up on this church a long time ago and gone away somewhere. But the voice of God, which is irresistible, which is like the sound of many waters. The Bible says the voice of God actually thunders forth to bring us what we need to know. Now they get to the Red Sea. In Exodus 17, verse 10 and 11. Sorry, verse four, um, chapter 14, verse 15. And then they see the Egyptians coming. And then the Lord says to um, Moses, why are you crying before me? Because the people were complaining, oh, we should have died in Egypt. There's, you know, there's lots of graves there that we could have been buried in. And you want us to be buried here. So Moses was, the people were crying. Moses cried out to God and said, why are you crying before me? Tell the people to move forward. Move forward? Into the sea? But the voice of God was, is irresistible. So they start moving forward. And what happened? The sea saw them and the sea fled. You can find that in Psalm 114. There's one to, I think, about ten. The sea saw them and it fled. The voice of God is the cure for all the doubts of life. The voice of God should be the stronghold behind your faith. Without the voice of God, you will remain a victim. Without the voice of God, you will be defeated. The faith of Abraham, Moses, Isaac. You know, God said to Isaac, there was a famine. And he was going to go away into Egypt. And he said, God said, don't go. Dwell in this land. This is where your prosperity is. So the Bible says what? Isaac stayed there and he was strong and what? He was prosperous. And then what happened? The Philistines envied him. But the root of all that was what? Access to the voice of God. Without access to the voice of God, you and I will remain victims in the world. So let's move this back into the New Testament. In Acts 4 verse 20, the Bible says that what? The disciple says what? We cannot but speak the things we have heard and seen. We cannot but speak the things we have heard and seen. You and I should be saying we, have, we cannot but what? Speak the things we have heard and seen. What did they hear? On the Mount, of, um, the, the Mount of Configuration. What did they hear? They heard, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him. And based on that, their faith was unshakable, even in the times, or even when times were very hard. So God was speaking to the apostles and moving rapidly forward to now, God still speaks today. God still speaks today. What did he say? I am the Lord. I change not. I am the Lord. I change not. So God is talking all the time. He has something to say about your finances. He has something to say about where you have to live. 
He has something to say about the church. He has something to say about everything and anything that you can ever imagine. But you and I need to tune in to hear what God is saying. If you don't tune in, I don't want to run ahead of myself. But if you don't tune in, you remain a victim in this life. You become a frustrated Christian. You wonder why you give all the time and it doesn't work. I have found that giving, based on what God has told me, is the key to going up. When I heard the verse of God saying, resign from your job, well, my wife was pregnant at this time. With our firstborn. So that's not a very good time to resign from your job, is it? Not knowing where your next bill is, you know, where, where your next paycheck is going to come from. And your wife is pregnant. And there were people telling me, you are, are you crazy? What are you doing? Doctors don't do that. This is what normal doctors do. They stay the course and do this and do that and do that. But because I was hearing directly from God, I couldn't stop. I just had to go along and do what God says. Now, I'll tell you what. Financially, my salary moved to almost two and a half times in about a year and a half when I did that. Recently, when we came back from, um, where did we come back from? Um, was it Florida? Yeah. Anytime we travel and we come back, there's always something interesting happening to challenge our faith. So, Pastor Benny says, we want you to change Bible school from Sunday to Tuesday. I was naturally upset. Because over the years, I've been juggling my rotor just to make that happen. And it would take a lot of effort to actually try and change and I, and I remember going back and sitting in my room, and I, 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 I thought about it, and I said a quick prayer, and then I said, well, if that's what the prophet is saying, that's what we'll do in this house. So we're going to do that. I don't know how it's going to work, but God, God will answer. So that's what we did. And God has answered. He's making things happen. Actually, when I, get, I work, we get paid a certain amount of money per hour, and I'm not going to mention that. It's a, it's, a good amount, it's a good amount. And for a, a, for a time period, I had to work in England for a little while. And I remember I accidentally even sent Denise a text one day when I was on the train. And then she sent me a text back and said, what do you mean? Because I was going on the train and I was rejoicing. You know, I didn't like going down to England, but I was rejoicing. I said, well, this, this is what I need to do to make things happen. I'll do it. Now, a few months later, I come back to Scotland. And Scotland would normally not pay me the rates they pay me in England. Now they're paying me exactly what they're paying me in England. And the favor I'm getting where I go, you know, where I work right now, is just amazing. But you have to listen to what is coming out of this pulpit. Because there's something in there for you. When your pastor asks you to do something, you must be quick to do it. Because you see, the church is a blessed body. I think I'm, 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 I'm moving off track right now. But the church is a blessed body. If you can connect with the vision of God, if you can connect with what God is doing, your life will be changed dramatically. You will move from nothing and striving. I've seen God do some pretty amazing things. I remember the other day, my wife Dorothy came up and he said, oh, come and look. There's a funny growth on Joshua's, um, in Joshua's groin. And I looked at the thing. It was a horrible thing. Growing. 
But suddenly there was this supernatural faith inside me. I said, I cast you in the name of Jesus. You will fall to the ground. And then I walked away. The following day we woke up and the thing was gone. This is, this, this is the realm in which God wants us to be moving in. But it's actually, you see, when you are in that place, to be absent from the body, I know they use it when people die. To be absent from the body is to be what? To be present with the Lord. Well, you can actually be absent from the body while you are alive. Because we are caught up in the flesh so much so that we are not, they're never present with the Lord, so we don't hear what he's saying. So God still speaks today. This is very important. God speaks to us through three means or three ways. One of them is God will speak to you what? Directly. God will speak to you directly, just like what God told me, resign from your work and serve your pastor. Do whatever he needs to be done. That's not something that you find in the Bible. So sometimes God will speak to you directly. God spoke to Moses what? Directly. God spoke to what? Abraham directly. God spoke to what? Isaac directly. And through the voice of God, Moses had three million people fed daily for 40 years. Through the voice of God, Moses had water for the Israelites daily, including washing their clothes for 40 years. Through the voice of God, there was no feeble one amongst their tribes. None of them walking in the wilderness had puffy legs, swollen legs, heart problems, nothing. Total health care delivery. They didn't need the NHS. Just through the voice of God. There's so much in the mystery of faith. But access to the voice of God is the stronghold of faith. The other way that God speaks to us is through His Word. It's through the Bible. These pages that you see here is God speaking. So if you leave the Bible to lie down on a shelf and gather dust, well, You remain a victim because you won't hear what what God is saying to you. Because behind every verse of Scripture is the voice of God. Behind every verse of Scripture is the voice of God. In Isaiah 34 verse 16, the Bible says that, Search from the book of the Lord and read, Not one of these shall fall. Not one shall lack her mate. For by my mouth, I have commanded it. By my mouth, I have commanded it. God is saying that I have spoken these things. And by my spirit, he has gathered them. So every verse of scripture, has the voice of God behind it. Every verse of Scripture has the voice of God behind it. I remember when God spoke to me, and I remember I spoke to my wife about it, and she actually didn't grasp what I was saying. God actually spoke to me from Psalm 32, verse 8. And he said what? I will guide you with my own eyes. It was so graphic that when I came out of, out of the room and I told my wife, I, I'm sure I looked crazy. And she, the question she asked me, how can God guide you with his eyes? But I, I, you know, the, the voice of God was so strong. 
And I've never felt since then like I lack direction in my life. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Never. Things come up. Things happen. And I just know that God will direct me. God will navigate me. God will show me the way that I should go. Then again, and I'm sure a lot of people know this scripture. And I'm, I'm, I believe that a lo- God has actually spoken to a lot of people concerning this scripture. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom and all its demands and all its demands and all these things that people are dying to get shall be added daily to you. Seek ye first the king. I remember when this voice came to me. And I've never looked back. God has continued to add to us daily, 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 daily. Yes, the challenges of life come, but I know that God has promised that if I seek first his kingdom, I've heard that voice. That voice is irresistible. The voice is unstoppable. The voice is thundering like the scripture says. The voice is like the sound of many waters. And I know that God will deliver me out of anything that is thrown. Um, against me. So God speaks through to us through the scripture. It says in Psalm 29 verse 3 that, that the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. Now, what is waters? Let's look at Ephesians 5.26. The Bible says that what? He what? Sanctify and cleanse her what? By the what? Washing of water by the word. So the word is the water. And God's voice is what? It's like the water. So when you are reading the word, you see, until you, until you can take the Bible and decide that this is God talking directly to me. If what I'm saying is from the Bible, if you can take it as God is directly talking to me, then we're all up and running. There's no problem. Our faith will be working because you know that God has said it and God will do it. And then the final way that God speaks to us is through the Holy Spirit. Or the voice of the Spirit. In John 16, verse 12 to 13, the Bible says that when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not what? Speak of His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you. Of things to come. So the Holy Spirit has a voice. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God speaks to us. In Revelations chapter 2 from verse 7 to 11, the Bible keeps saying that, "Let let him who has ears, let him hear what? What the Spirit is saying to the church. So the Spirit is always saying something to the church. But you and I will have to do what? We'll have to tune in to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So, just to recap, there are three ways that God speaks to us. He speaks to us what? Directly, like the way He spoke to Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and all these heroes of faith. Number two, He speaks to us through the Word. I like it. The Bible says that the voice of God thunders. Over the scripture. And then finally, God speaks to us through the voice of the Spirit. Now, the question is how do we connect? 
with God speaking to us? How do we connect? God is still speaking today. He has something to say about your marriage. He has something to say about your life. He has a plan and a, pl- a plan and a purpose for you. And he wants to speak into your life. But how do you connect to this? I think we've run out of time. So we'll have to continue this in a few weeks or, you know, whenever pastor um, would like me to continue. He, he said, if I don't finish it, he would like me to continue another time. But, you know, we, 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 the next time we speak about this, we're going we're gonna to talk about how to connect to the voice of God. Because if we can connect to the voice of God, then we will hear the voice of God and then we will not be victims anymore. Then we can say to the fig tree, what exactly what God is saying. Because a lot of the times what happens is because we are not really connected to God, we actually get caught up in a performance. We're performing. Many words. That's why the the Bible says, by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Nine words. Just be careful. If you go above nine words, just check what you're saying. Just in case it's too much. Nine words. No one will ever eat of this fruit again from this tree. That's it. And then he walks away. Thanks for listening. Remember to visit our website, www.bridge-church.com and connect with us via Facebook and Twitter.